uh, there's a really fast announcement. If you are a health and human development major, any of the majors in, in health and human development, so like recreation, HDFS, kinesiology, whatever, that's all HHD, right? Um, I want to see you. At, there's an opportunity Thursday, April 12th, 8:30 to 10:15. It's a really cool opportunity, and if you're free at that time and you want to take advantage of the opportunity, see me right after class because it's it's really cool. It's going to be cool, okay? Especially if you're a student of color or outside the box, part of the queer community, whatever it is, right? Okay. Um, Next slide, or not next slide. Um, here's what I want to say. Today's class is the first in a series of four classes. And they're all linked together. Wait, hang on. First off, if you're Jewish, by the way, those of you who are Jewish, if you have Jewish friends and families, who are just hanging out right now, send them the link to the live stream and tell them to watch because today's class is like... However, this is the first of four classes that are all linked together. And, yo, hang on, I need, I need quiet. I have to talk to, I have to talk to Christians. Okay, here we go. Seriously, I need the whole class for this. Okay, this is a really intense class, uh, as is the next class. Christians, please remember, I was born into a Christian family. I was baptized in a Christian church. I was confirmed in a Christian church. I am really comfortable in a Christian church. I don't have many of my closest friends and family are Christians, most of them actually. And this, what is the, today's class and Thursday's class is not an attack on Christians by any stretch of the imagination, okay? No stretch of the imagination is this an attack on Christians. Cool? I'm, je, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna juxtapose a couple things. Just like the class on Thon was not an attack on Thon. It was an opportunity to see some things a little bit differently. So that's what today's class is. Okay, cool? And let's go, bro. Okay, what images, feelings, ideas come to mind when you think about Muslims and Islam? Just for yourself, just think, Think about it. What comes to mind? What do you think about? What are the words? What do you hear people saying? What do people around you say? <coughs> Muslims, you can just hang out. This isn't about you. So what comes to mind? So here, let me show you, let me show you a couple images. Maybe this comes to mind. Maybe it's people praying. Maybe it's, bro, maybe it's a mosque. Maybe it's people. Maybe this is what you think. Maybe this is what you see, what's in your mind's eye. Maybe it's these guys, these ISIS guys. Maybe you think violence. Maybe you think soldier. Or maybe you think these terrorists. Maybe it's these women here, dressed in burkas. So maybe you think about women and women's rights. Maybe, next slide, maybe it's this. Here's after a suicide bombing. Maybe you think terror and violence in a different way. Maybe you have images like that, right? Or maybe it's these guys, even worse, right? Here are some really radical dudes who are about ready to kill these other Men, who are probably all Muslims, by the way. Maybe it's that. You go to the next slide. And that you really associate Islam with violence. So what images, feelings, thoughts do you have when you think about Christianity and Christians? Okay. What images? So go to the first slide. Maybe it's right here. People praying. It's a cross. 
with Jesus on the cross. Maybe it's the church. Maybe the church in your mind's eye looks something like that. Just like an image. If I asked you to write something down, maybe that's what it would be. Next slide. Or maybe here it is. Think about a choir. Think about ministers. Think about teaching or priests or ministers. Next one. Or maybe it's just prayer. It's an image like this. So, I want to juxtapose Islam and Christianity, and we're going to do it by having a conversation about Judaism. And go to the next slide, bro. So, here's the United States currently. This is brand new data that just came out. 40, over 40, about 40% of the American public feel as though Islam is more violent than other religions. Okay, as a tendency to greater violence. Among Republicans, these are adult Republicans, 70%, 70% that Islam is more violent than other religions. That's the highest group of all the groups. High school educated, grade school educated, rich, uh, rich people, poor people, white people, brown people, urban dwellers, rural dwellers, whatever it is, the group that posed the highest number were Republicans and probably Trump supporting Republicans were the absolute highest. But 70% with this belief that Islam is a more violent religion than, than other religions, okay? Has a tendency to, for violence, promotes violence. Probably doesn't really know what that means, but nonetheless, there it is. That's really high. So, we're going to talk today about deicide and anti-Semitism. All right? Deicide. That means literally killing God. In anti-Semitism, we generally mean it to mean being against Judaism or Jews. And deicide, the reason I'm calling it deicide is because this is the aspect of Christianity that we are going to talk about. The idea of deicide and how that is linked and woven into Christian ideology and Christian philosophy over the years and the consequences of that. So first thing, Jews. Next slide. What, uh, why are Jews significant? Okay, you ready? Why are Jews significant? Here you go. You ready? Fundamentally, I'm not a scholar of this period of history, but here's what I can give you in a very quick nutshell. Jews, as people of the book, were the first people to take codified legalistic ethical standards, or ethical standards, codify them, write them down, organize them, and link them to God. Fundamental. Right? And then write it down. People of the book try to establish a codified legalistic way of operating forward, of moving forward, based on the thoughts about what God would or would not want, as well as seeing, envisioning that there is a single God, not multiple gods, but a single God, the God of creation. Very unique. Jews really, the beginning of that sort of thinking emerges out of Judaism. So here's what I need to do. Really fast. Just quickly, I need a couple, pe couple people in class who are Jewish. Like, super Jews. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta, like, really Jewish. Like, yeah, to, like not like, yeah, I'm not really Jewish. Or, like, I, you get up here and you're like, well, yeah, I don't really. I don't really know anything because I don't know. Someone who's, a couple people who are really Jewish. Really fast. I, all I want you to do is just tell people, dude, one, somebody else. I just need you to tell the class what Judaism is. Are we going to leave it up to this guy? Is that you? Are you a super Jew or a Jew? You're Jewish? All right, that's good enough. You know what I mean, right? <laughs> Dude. All right, man. What's your name? Jason. Jason. Um, where are you from? Long Island. Long Island. Dude, say no more. What's your name? Laura. Lauren, where are you from? Laura. Laura? Yeah. Where are you from? Outside Philly. Outside of Philly. Here, stand up here, though, so you're sort of in the front. Okay, what's, what's being Jewish mean to you? Uh, Wait, it's, it's Jason, Jason, right? yeah. Jason and it's, Laura. It's so just like identity and going back to just following some 
specific values. It's basically like every other religion, but. So do you, what do you do like, what do you, because a lot of people here know nothing about Judaism, right? What, what's the, you go to synagogue, when do you go to synagogue, what I do mean, you right do? right now it's Passover. Okay, got it. So what's that mean? So that's like the exodus of the Jews from Egypt when we came out of slavery. After like hundreds of years, um, the parting of the Red Sea, we... Wait, do you believe in that? Did yeah, like... I there's like a thing like... Apparently, like, if the tides are right and the wind, like, they, there can be a sandbar on the Red Sea, so. Oh, so you're, like, applying science to that idea. It's possible that people passed through the Red Sea. Okay, I got you. Escaping yeah. slavery. That it wasn't really God who just said, okay, here, I'm going to well, part I mean, it for you. that's Judaism. That's the part that, like, yeah. that's what makes me Jewish, is that okay, I believe that. Okay, I got that. you. Okay. So what else? What is, what is Passover? What do you do? What did you do last weekend? Like, Christians celebrated? Well, um, you get together with all your family, and you have, like, a big dinner, and the dinner, there's, like, parts of the meal that are symbolic and you like go over the story. I don't know, mostly for me Judaism is just like one God, you believe in the Torah and like what it says and like also like, it's like from your upbringing and like your family life, you know, that's a big part of it. Okay, you, and you what's convert, the Torah for those who don't know? It's, it's the Old Testament. Okay, and do you do like, do you do the whole bunnies stealing eggs from chickens and giving them to children thing? Yeah, I mean, as much as, like, someone in the United States does, you know? All right. Do you do that in your family? Is that just like, a Christian thing, or did yeah, you just do Christian. that also? For, for Passover, we, so it was like we traveled to the desert for 40 years, and we were trying to get to the Yeah, land but what do you do now, though, bro? What do you what do, do you now? Mean? Like, what'd you do with you, what do you do with your family during Passover yeah, if you're not coloring Easter we eggs? We had, uh, like, the first two nights of Passover is called a Seder. Okay. Which is like you eat different types of food which represent different types of things. That's the good stuff. Such as like we eat matzah, which is unleavened bread. And we can't eat any like thing, anything risen, like that has yeast in it or anything, or wheat or gluten. We do that because, um, so like to leave Egypt as slaves, like that wasn't something that anybody other than us wanted to happen. So we had to rush out. So you couldn't wait for the bread to rise is the whole point. Uh, okay. All right. That's cool. So it's, <laughs> I almost made a comment. It's not about Jesus rising from the dead and, or something. And no. the, the whole right. point of like the unleavened bread, which is flat. Um, I actually talked about it with my rabbi today. Okay, cool. And so it was like the start of the Jews, like for a new start. And the unleavened bread rep represents like humility and like a flat, flat start, like a, and then you work your way up and there's like another, there's like 40 days, like 49 days where each week you work on like seven of the different uh, char like characteristics, uh, like kindness, uh, sacrifice, five other things. Okay. And it's like 49 days of working on that and from the like unleavened bread, you work your way up until like the 49 days. Then you then you like sacrifice. I I don't do it, but like I talked about it with today. It's like you sacrifice uh, risen bread, something like that. Okay, I got you. All right. So is so? Do you believe in God? Yeah. Because lo I mean, lots of Jews who I know are really, I mean, it's just like people yeah. of the book, right? So you that's, think about it so much. That's like the, up, like the family life, the community behind it is a big part of Judaism. So, yeah. I mean, I guess I, I'm, I'm Jewish and I believe in God, but I mean, I, I don't know if I could tell someone that they're not Jewish because they don't believe in God the same way as me, you know? Okay, I got you. Matzah. Matzah. <laughs> So That's do you the good stuff. The egg matzah is the good stuff. Yeah. If you're going to buy it. <laughs> Dude. So uh, let me ask you, then do you go to synagogue? And what do you do in synagogue? Um, it's like a lot. It's Fridays and Saturday uh, night. Yeah. Or, yeah, in the morning. And like, I don't know. It's a lot longer than church. We read everything's in Hebrew pretty much. So everything's in Hebrew. Yeah, well, pretty much. And, when, and then what do you do? What do, you, what do you mean, what do we do? I mean, what, what happens? People just sit while, it, while oh, the rabbi reads and... It's very similar to church in that way. Do you sing songs? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I'm asking, I, mean, I know, like I'm asking because... Orthodox, you know, and okay. like in some synagogues, the males and females sit together and some are completely separate sections. Okay. 
Like in some synagogues, uh, when girls get bat mitzvahed, they're not supposed to read the Torah. Uh -huh. Whereas in reform ones, the girls read the Torah too, and there's, in orthodox ones, only males could read the Torah. For okay. the most part, there's three, um, for lack of a better word, sects of, of Judaism. There's like reform, conservative, and orthodox. And like between that, there's like a gradient of like different synagogues having different um, like traditions and different things that are from each sect that are more important. Yeah, yeah, them. yeah. So, like, as in Christianity, it's, there isn't just Judaism. In Christianity, you've got so many different churches and sects and so on, so it's the same I'd as true in Judaism. it's less different, honestly. Yeah. It's just, so? It just became more secular throughout, yeah, yeah. throughout history. Okay, all right, cool. Like, if someone was, like, conservative or reform, they could probably, like, if they moved to a new place, they could probably go to, would you say they could probably go to either like, not really, but, you know, yeah. there's some flexibility there. But, like, you wouldn't, as, like, a Catholic person, go to a Presbyterian church, you know? And I how mean, is... I don't know. Okay, let me ask you this final question. Yo, how is it to live in a Christian society where we take, like, Sundays are the holy day? Because for you, Sundays aren't the holy... For Jews and for Muslims, Sundays aren't the holy day. But here it is. How is that for you, like, to be at Penn State where, you know, like... You might have classes Honestly, on Friday. For me, it's like, it's kind of been like a crisis of identity for me. Cause like, I don't know, I've met people. I've always, I grew up in like a place where like, it was like nearly half Jewish people to, to Christian. And like, I don't know, like I never really saw myself as like an, a minority, but here I kind of need to like assert my own faith a little bit more or else it kind of gets like, I don't know. I feel like it gets erased a little bit. Okay. Like it's really easy to lose your habits. Yeah, I agree, but I come from a community where like literally everyone is Jewish. My friends, my, my, my best friends, my grandma and my best friend's grandma were neighbors like back in Iran. So when, grandma. okay, so when you're in, so in your community, like you just slide, like in the summer times, let's say you just slide into a schedule, it's a Jewish schedule. Yeah, there's but you, people walking the temple every Saturday morning like and up here, that's just not, you, yeah, it's, it's just different. different. But like, I still try to like, integrate myself as much as possible and try to keep that identity. Like yeah. if I didn't go home this weekend, I was raised reform. So it's a little bit, not casual, but it's a little bit less um, strict. I don't know. But if I hadn't gone home this weekend to go to Seder, I would almost feel like I wasn't celebrating Passover. You know? Got you. So I can't, they've got Hillel and stuff, but I kind of feel like I need to go home to like, Really to practice. feel that energy, yeah. to feel the Jewish energy. Yeah. Yeah, I got that. Okay, cool. I kind of like resent it a little bit that like it's not that this ener this environment doesn't like foster that so much. Yeah, it would be hard. It's hard, right? Because yeah. you need a lot of you need like you a big, huge group of people yeah. to really do that. All right, cool. All right, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, how many of you are, are, are Jewish, by the way? How many? Really? Wait, raise your hands really high. Look around. That's a lot of people. Okay, cool. Um, all right, ready? Um, here we go. There's an idea in Judaism. Hey, wait, can you actually go back one? Um, deicide. The reason I chose deicide is because there's a thread that's, that's going through Christianity that Jews killed Jesus, okay? That, it, you know, it's not the Romans. I mean, it was the Romans, and some of you hear the Romans, et cetera, et cetera. And you may grew up thinking the Romans, but there's this thread. There's also this thread going through Christianity, Christian theology, that Jews killed Jesus. Who killed Jesus? Well, the Romans, but it's really the Jews. And Jews gave him up, and Jews betrayed Jesus. And this is a thread going through all of Christianity. In fact, next, um, these are core doctrinal teachings of the Catholic Church up through the 1960s in the Second Vatican Council, which is pretty serious. Core doctrinal teachings. So as you're reading those core doctrinal teachings, what I want you to ask yourself is, okay, if these are core doctrinal teachings... Dude, it's not that Jews did something wrong or Jews were in the wrong or Jews maybe kind of went astray. It's that Jews killed God. 
So this core doctrinal teaching that Jews killed your God for Christians. This is big. Jesus was God. Jews killed God. Imagine the kind of feelings that could engender in a lot of people. This idea that Jewish people were responsible for killing God. I don't want you to think about how you think about it today, how it was talked about at your church, how you talk about it in your current Bible study group, how you talk about it in your families. What I want you to do is take a sweep back for the past 2,000 years with this idea that if groups of Christians had the idea, live with the idea that Jews killed God, how do you think they responded to Jewish people over the years? Okay? And when they respond in negative ways to Jews, it's like this is what God wants because the last thing, God rejected Jews because of what they did. All right, next slide, bro. All right, so here it is. You got to let me just do a bit of history here. I'm going to do it in 60 seconds. Okay, we ready? Christians, are we good? Christians, right? We're good? Because I haven't said anything yet that's going to lead you on to be on edge. All right, man. So here, 500 years ago, there's this dude, Martin Luther. Martin Luther started, everyone, who's a Protestant in here? Who, who was raised Protestant? Raise your hands. No, really high. Pro, this is, wait, do you even know what Protestants are? Methodist, Baptist, non-denominational, just you like you love Jesus and you read the Bible and you sing songs. All of that's Protestant. Lutheran is Protestantism. Got it? All, anything that is not Catholic, essentially, if you are a Christian and you are not Greek Orthodox and you are not Catholic, that means you are a Protestant. So how many Christians in here were at the very least baptized, born and raised Protestants or have families who are Protestants? Raise your hands. It's most every Christian in here. How many Christians in here are not Protestant? Because you're Catholics? Yeah. Okay. All right, man. So here, 500 years ago, this guy, Martin Luther, started everything. Basically, every change in the church. Basically, here's what he said. The Catholic church is corrupt. The Catholic church has created an institution. Yo, hang on. Man, dudes, Listen. The Catholic, the institution of the church became so strong that the main goal of the church was to reproduce itself. So the church made followers pay for everything. You want to get married, you pay. You want to get divorced, you pay if you even can. You want to bury your loved one, you pay. You want to baptize your child, you pay. You want to get to heaven, you pay. If you don't pay, these are indulgences. If you don't pay, you will not get to heaven. So the church basically had its followers in a headlock like this. And that if you don't do these things and give us money, you will not get to heaven. You can't get to God but to us. We are your path through God. Luther, this guy Martin Luther came along and said, this is corruption. This is evil. This is wrong. And, and people should be able to get to God by faith. The things that you might assume to be just normal were not normal through most of human history. It is Luther. If you have the belief that you get to God by your faith, you owe that to Luther. Okay, next slide, bro. That's the beginning of Protestantism. Luther, early in his career, wrote about the treatment of Jews and the way the Catholic Church and Christians were treating Jews. And he said, basically, I'd rather be a hog. The way you Christians treat Jews... Because of your belief that Jews killed God and because of the way you've just created all of these systems of oppression against Jews, I would rather be a hog or a pig than be a Jew. The way you treat Jewish people. So this is Luther, but then Luther changed. Later, next slide, here's what he did. He wrote this other book. He shifted his thinking on Jews. And suddenly he started attacking Jews along with other Christians in the church, the Catholic church that was attacking Jews and just regularly attacked Jews. It was just given. Wait, hang on one second. Yo, dudes. Yo, gentlemen, right there. 
Dude, right here, okay? Here's the deal. We're going to... I'm going to show you a video in a couple minutes. And all of you people who are just here, like, dicking around, you're going to feel like a-holes as soon as you watch the video. So I'm going to save you from feeling like an a-hole. And... out of respect for your classmates in the room who are Jewish, what I want to tell you to do is either be like this dude over here and fall asleep. (laughs) Or pay attention. Cool? So here's what we're going to do. You ready? Right here. So you got 1,500 years of really horrible treatment of Jewish people. This dude Luther comes along. Many people are pointing this out. He comes along, he points it out, but then he later jumps on the bandwagon at the same time that he really begins the Protestant Revolution. So the Protestant Revolution, or the Reformation, but the Revolution, he brings all the anti Semitism with him. And here's what he said about Jews. Nothing but thieves and robbers. So we need to get rid of this unbearable devilish burden, the Jews. This is the single most important philosopher in all of Protestantism. All of you who are Protestants, all the people who claim to be saved by the love of Jesus, By their faith, not a single one of them would have had that experience and would be all your relatives that are in heaven with Jesus, they wouldn't be there except for this guy. So here's what else he said. Set fire to their synagogues and their schools. Bury and cover them with dirt so nothing can ever be found. Do this in honor of our Lord in Christ. Raise their houses, destroy their houses. All their prayer books, their Talmudic writings, destroy them and burn them because they're filled with idolatry, lies, cursing, blasphemy. The rabbis should be forbidden to teach under penalty of death. No safe highway on, no safe conduct or, or, or on the highways for any Jews. Usury shall be prohibited, right? And I recommend the flail, an axe, a hoe, a spade, a distaff, a spindle into the hands of the young, strong Jews and Jewesses. Let them earn their bread by the sweat of their brow. Really, basically, just absolute condemnation of the Jews. This, then, the Jews and their lies. Okay? Protestants, those who love Jesus, This is the guy. This is the guy who opened the door to Jesus for you. This is the treatment of Jews. This thinking is not new. This is woven into, before he came along, 1,500 years of Christianity. So it's 1,500 years of Jews getting this treatment. He just wrote it down in this particular way, but many people were writing it down way before him. Okay? So you say, all right. What do you think happens? What do you think happens regarding the treatment of Jews? How many of you study the treatment of Jews? Like how many Christians in here, actually, if I brought you up here and gave you a microphone and said, hey, just spend three minutes telling the class what you know about the ways in which Christians treated Jews over the past 2,000 years. How many of you could do it? Three minutes. Two minutes. 
How about one minute? Just one minute as a Christian, let me tell fellow Christians in the room the history of Christian treatment of Jewish people. How many could do one minute? Okay, so listen. You go do your own research. Remember that. But let me walk you through some things. Imagine people following the words of Luther. I recommend really destroying them. Not new words, not new, thinking that's already part of Catholicism, thinking that then becomes part of Protestantism, treatment of Jews, so imagine that. So here, look at this slide. It culminates in this. Mid 20th century, you know this. Nazis, right? They're all Christians. They're all Christians. Now, Christians, you might say, well, they're not Christians because Christians wouldn't have done what the Nazis did. But, okay, well, then none of the Muslims that you, our leaders are attacking on a regular basis as being Muslims are Muslims. Any Muslim who kills another Muslim, who acts violently, who does sinful things, is not a Muslim. So remember, if you want to say Nazis weren't Christians, then you have to remember that no Muslim who does anything bad to somebody else is actually a Muslim. Because that's not part of Islamic faith. That's not part of Islam. What the Nazis did in the treatment of Jews is not part of Christianity. Except that it is, and it has been, and it was. In fact, it was core doctrinal teaching for Catholics for nearly 2,000 years to treat Jews in the way that Martin Luther said. So imagine what happened. Do you, many of you don't know about the Holocaust. Many of you haven't seen footage from the Holocaust. Many of you have no idea the World War II Holocaust that the Nazis perpetuated. The idea is six million Jews killed. It was the, some of the, the fastest, most extensive genocide. I mean, just, um, just the attempt to exterminate. The idea was to exterminate every single Jewish person in Europe. Get rid of Judaism. Exactly what Martin Luther said, it's what the Nazis tried to do. Let's get rid of them all. We will build extermination camps even. First off, we'll, we'll, we'll make them work for us. And then we'll just put them in these concentration camps. And then at some point in time, we got to get rid of them. So we'll build these extermination camps and we'll kill them. And then we'll burn the bodies. We'll put them in mass graves and we'll burn them. And we'll put them in these ovens and we'll burn them. And we'll just f keep these things going constantly, 24-7. We will just rid the world of Jewish people. Who's we? Christians. Oh, Christians. Oh, I got it. But wait, I thought Muslims were violent and Christians weren't violent. Wait, hang on. ISIS and all the evil things that ISIS does. and Well, Christians would never do that. We wouldn't act like that because we're Christians. We sit and we pray. Remember the image I had of Christians praying and how peaceful that is and how nice that is? Well, these are Christians too, my friends. And that's not very long ago. And that could happen again very easily. It's not very, nothing has changed much in the world of Christianity to stop that. It'll just be another way. It's not Christianity that led the way. It's another ideology that was embraced by people who were Christians who should know better. And just like in the United States, we'll do it. At some point in the future, but we'll not call it Christianity, but it will be all the Christians, just like the 70% of Christians who think Muslims are more violent than any other religion. And so when it comes time to attack all the Muslims, how difficult is it going to be for the 70% to just say, oh yeah, you're going to have to go kill them. Oh yeah, you're going to have to slaughter them. How many years did it take of Christians telling other Christians about the evil doings of 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 Jews and how the Jews are trying to take over and the Jews are stealing 
Stalin and the Jews this and the Jews that and the Jews. And then when Nazism comes along, how difficult is it for them to jump on board and be like, oh yeah, okay, so we have to kill all the Jews. Because they've been prepared for it. They've been hearing it. It's deeply woven into their psychology. And so what makes us think that we're not doing the same thing? We've already shown that Christians can do the most horrific genocide in human history conducted by Christians. Christians can do that. Well, then we can do it again. Muslims could do it. I'm not saying, I'm not saying mus, those, the Muslims who are doing the same thing are innocent. I'm not saying that. They're guilty as well. Nor are they Muslims. But what I'm saying is the two things got to be seen together. I want to show you some footage. This is really disturbing footage. You do not have to watch it. But I'm, what I'm finding out is that increasingly people, except those of you who are Jewish, are increasingly not watching footage from the Holocaust. So when you think about Nazi Germany, and when you think about what happened to Jewish people, and when you hear Jews always talking about the Holocaust and genocide, it's like, why do you have to talk about it so much? Because no one has seen the footage. And I want to show you some footage. I want you to just feel it. You don't have to watch it. It's a trigger warning, but we're going to put it up here. Oh, by the way, this is Hitler right here. We tolerate no one in our ranks who attacks the idea of Christianity. In fact, our movement is a Christian movement. That was just standard in Nazism. It is a Christian movement. All right, here, watch this.
You know, those are like the great-grandparents of your classmates who are Jewish. And so in total, about 11 to 12 million people were killed. 11 to 12 million. Some of whom were Christians killed by other Christians. Catholics mostly killed by Protestants. About 6 million Jewish people. Fundamentally based on a hate that went back 1900 years. A hate. And then we think, okay, that's the pinnacle, right? That's the pinnacle. That's how far you can go. And the reason I'm talking to Christians in this way, I'm talking to you in this way, is because it's really easy to point our fingers at people of other religions, like they're more violent. I don't think it's possible actually to find a religion that has committed more violence than Christianity. That's not an attack on Christianity. That's just an observation. If you see it as an attack, then you can look at me as, Sam, you're attacking Christianity. You're an idiot. Don't do that. Therefore, I don't have to listen to you. No, listen to me. Because the next time then you want to pass judgment on some other group, you can think, wait a minute, people in my group my religion, my belief system, they had the same beliefs about Jesus. They celebrated the same Christian Easter that you just celebrated. The same one. What led them to walk down this dark path? And what makes you think, as a Christian, you won't walk down the same dark path when all the forces converge? Your Christianity is not going to stop you, just like their Christianity didn't stop you, just like Islam who Muslims again and again are saying Islam is a peaceful religion and Christians are saying Christianity is a peaceful religion. And Muslims say, no, but you got to understand, Islam is a very peaceful religion. But some people aren't peaceful. Some people are acting against the precepts of Islam. And then Christians over here are saying, no, but that's Islam. It's like, and they're saying, no, it's not Islam. It's just some people. And what I'm saying, Christians, now you know. Because we can say, no, that's Christianity. Christianity is a violent, violent religion. Look, here's, here's proof right here. Christians kill. And you say, no, they don't kill. Look, that's just some people. They weren't acting as Christians. They were just, yes, I get that. I agree with you. Then the same is true with Muslims. The same is true with other groups. The exact same true. There is not one single thing that you can say. So here, let's go back. We say, well, the United States was different. Next slide. So there were all these Jewish refugees during the war, after the war. And like, let me tell you, the data increasingly are coming out. We see is like, no, there was so much anti-Semitism. People put blocks up to Jews bringing them in, accepting refugees, bringing them into our worlds. Like, no, the anti-Semitism is like kept us from reaching out, from accepting, from building bonds, from, this, you know, this, the, you know, boats of refugees coming, just not letting them dock. I, I could give you stories. I'm not going to go into the story of this particular boat. It doesn't really matter. It's like, there's just so much hatred here in the United States also. We had the op many opportunities to stop it and how much we knew and we knew actually a lot more than we imagined that we knew. And then we talk about knowing. And, the, and if you, all you got to do is go back and read how Jews were talked about during the build up to the war and during the war and before the war. And it's like, wow, man, we were hating Jews also. And for many people here in the United States, Hitler was doing nothing more than carrying out their desires toward Jewish people. Again, I'm not attacking Christianity. I'm building a balance here so you can see something about how you view other people. I know the vast majority of Christians are not violent. These Christians were. 
which makes me see that, well, other Christians can be also, just like some Muslims are, which makes me see that other Muslims could become violent. That's how it works. Here, go to the next slide. This guy right here, he was this Catholic. In the 1930s, just to point this out, in the United States, he had a radio show. Look, read this quote. He had a radio show. He had 30 million listeners at the peak of his popularity. 30 million listeners in the United States. Right? So imagine after after World War II, when all that footage started to come out, when it started to become really clear what the Nazis had done to Germans. That's what he says. This really popular radio guy. And it took the Catholic Church another 20 years to get rid of that from its core doctrinal teachings, even after what happened in, with Nazi Germany. The footage that you just watched, even after the church is watching that footage and understanding everything that the, the anti-Semitism and the hatred of Jews created and what it caused, it still took them 20 years. It's like, man. Here, next one. So you say, okay, this is the past. Things have changed. People don't think like that anymore. People don't do these things anymore. People, no, maybe it's just, yeah, they're not, we're not acting. We're not actively killing Jews. But maybe we're kind of not paying attention to a few things. So I want to point a few things out to you that are happening around us that are probably a little bit worrisome. And if they're not worrisome to you, they might be worrisome to your Jewish classmates who are probably quite aware, but not talking about it. Although hopefully this week in discussion group, we'll start talking about the awareness. So here, go to, go to this one. So here, look, can you imagine today, this is a soccer match in Europe. Soccer game, right? Look, can you imagine... The swastika. Do you know what the swastika represents? You saw the, the video, right? You see the video? That's what it represents? Can you imagine putting a swastika on your arm or a tattoo or carrying a flag that's a swastika? What does it mean? Can, wait, can, can everybody in the, in the room who's Jewish, can you stand up really fast, please? Can you just stand up, please? The swastika means killing all of them. That's what the swastika means. So can you imagine going to a soccer game? Look around. Those of you in the front, look around. Look in the back. Look at how many of you. The swastika means killing them. So can you even playing around with a swastika? But can you imagine going to a soccer match? Look at, look at these women. Okay, you can sit down. Thanks for standing. I appreciate it. Look at these women with this sign. These are Muslim women. Like, come on. Seriously? Israel, the new Nazis. So here, this is, you know, probably, this is in the U.S. These are like these leftists who are critiquing Israel, right? I have a critique. You know, if you're wondering, do I have a critique of Israel? Yes, I have a critique of Israel. Do you want to talk about the most recent things that have been going on in Israel regarding Palestinians and Gaza? Yes, I can talk about that. I happen to be very well versed about, and I have a critique. That's a different story. Look, France, don't fall victim to Jewish propaganda. So, you know, the, again, these are like punishment for those involved. This is because of, you know, like the, the, like, uh, the, the cartoons. And so the cartoons, they depict Muhammad in some way. And you can't do that in Islam because, you know, that's blasphemous. Oh, so if you make a cartooning and depict Muhammad, then you got to go out and kill the person who did it. Seriously? Really? And then you blame it on Jews. It's like, you know what I mean? They weren't Jews who, who did it. But it's like, well, we'll just blame Jews for everything. Because you're not know, Jews. The banks, whatever. Amazon stock just crashed. Okay, we'll blame it on Jews. Whatever happens, we'll just blame it on Jews. Because it's easy to hate Jews and we don't hardly even think about it. Next slide. Dudes. Oh, wait. Hang on. Oh, these are the guys that are president condemned, but kind of didn't condemn, but he only condemned by saying, well, there's violence on both sides. He didn't condemn people holding swastikas. Dude, my friends, swastikas, 
do I need, what do, what do we need to do? Do we need to actually, do, do, I, do I need to show the video again? Do you need to watch it again? The swastika represents the video. These people in holding that swastika represents that video. It represents killing all of your classmates who are Jewish. That's what that represents. Why is it so hard to say that's abhorrent? Why is it so hard? What's so difficult about that? Really? Swastika, my friends. Kill all the Jews. Next one. So, 14 words, right? These are the most important words in all of in white supremacist sort of lexicon, so to speak. And white children are not Jewish children. Jews are not white. To all of these folks, Jews are not white. And in fact, if you look at the Charlottesville, and if you start looking at all these white supremacist groups that are rallying, their lines, their hatred is more directed at Jewish people than it is black people. Black people are the ones rising up. Black people are the ones confronting. Black people are coming forward. But if you listen to their rhetoric, it's mostly about Jews. It's secondarily about blacks. And I'm like, damn. It's just it's so easy. It's just so easy. Christians, listen. Don't be defensive. Be in, if you want to be anything, if you want to feel anything, feel enraged at what other Christians have done in the name of Jesus. But do not be defensive. Because if you are defensive, you miss the whole point of what I'm trying to do. And I'm not apologizing for Muslims. I'll talk about violent Islam at another time. That's not what this is. Don't be defensive. Especially when you have no idea. If, if this is the first time you ever heard any of this stuff, you have no room, my friends, to be defensive in any way, shape, or form. You have a lot of room to go out and study it on your own, but you have no room to be defensive. Next slide. Okay, here's Charlottesville. Look at that. Unite the right. The Daily Stormer. See anything about black people? I don't see anything. This is, this is the sign that went up. It's about Jews. Come together. We're going to come together. Dude, s- seriously. My friend... Have you not watched the videos? Did these people not watch the footage? Are, do they not understand what happened to Jewish people? Are they missing? What are they missing that I'm seeing that they're not seeing? It's really pretty clear. Next one. Okay, this guy. You ready? I'm going to have to read this. You know, when I want to look for Christian ministers who are fairly well-known, quite well-known, and anti-Semitism, I, it's difficult for me to decide who to choose. The examples are so far-ranging, so extensive. There are so many examples of blatant, in-your-face anti-Semitism, hatred of Jews. There are so many that I had to like work hard to narrow it down because we could do nothing but just read quote after quote from people that you probably know and you probably heard of. You probably haven't heard of this guy. However, I'm going to make him very relevant in a minute. But here's what he said. There are two methods to convert the world's Jewish population to Christianity. You, you understand, right? So the goal Jews, in case, for, in case those of you who are, need, who are not part of the Abrahamic tradition, you're not Jewish, you're not Christian, you're not Muslim. The idea is that, you know, at the turn of the century and the origin of Christianity in the very beginning, 2,000 years ago, lots of people are waiting around for the Messiah because there was this prophecy among the people of the book, i.e. Jews. And people of the book, because this is the thing that like, I just kind of want 
people of the book, it's like such an, like an intellectual religion, which makes it really cool, which is very attractive to me, by the way. But the prophecy is that God is going to come again. God will reveal herself. And so it's waiting. There were many people walking around in the land of Judea and what we talk about, the, the land of the, the biblical lands. There were many people walking around talking about the Messiah coming. They're the new Messiah. Maybe this person, maybe that person. I don't know. Who knows? Have no idea. But there were many people. For whatever reason, Jesus emerged at the top and people carried on. Maybe it's because... Jesus is the one that people, millions and millions and billions of people follow because he really is the Messiah. That's what you believe if you're a Christian. But lots of people didn't necessarily believe that because there were a lot of people saying they were the Messiah. And so Jewish people, some were like, yeah, and Jesus was Jewish, by the way. Christians, don't forget that. Jesus was a Jew. So some people went toward Jesus and were like, yeah, we're going to follow this guy. Other people were like, nah. I'm going to hold off. I'm not thinking he's the real deal. It's going to be somebody else. Right? And so they waited. So then you got to come figure out who you're going to blame for the death, the crucifixion of Jesus. And then, you know, later it becomes, okay, it's all these people that didn't follow him. If they would have just followed him, then it'd be all good. And there would be no more Jews because all Jews would have just followed the real Messiah. But it makes me think if the real Messiah was really clearly the Messiah, if God really wanted to make it clear that this is truly the Messiah, then God would have made it clear enough for all Jewish people to follow. But God didn't do that. And so some followed and some didn't. And that's what we're operating with here. Okay? So now... Christians, in order to make the prophecies, bring the prophecies out, because you're waiting, because Christians now wrote the New Testament, and they said the same thing, which is that Jesus will come again at the end of times. And one of the things we got to do is we got to reinstate the government of Israel. So therefore, you got a lot of Christians supporting Israel. And then we got to go out and we got to convert all the Jews to Christianity. So you got Jews all over the world. You got to bring them to Christianity. And this guy says... Listen, lots of Christians think different things, but this is like sort of a basic idea in Christianity. So this guy says, there are two ways to do that. So he discussed the fishermen that will use grace to persuade Jews to convert. So it's like, I'm a fisherman. I'm casting my pole out to all the Jews in the class. Here we go. Casting out, boom. Okay, I'm going to cast my, my bait out. My bait is like grace. Like grab on to the grace and come, and come to me and we will come to Jesus and we'll all be good. Got it? That's one way to do it. Grace. Okay, introduce you to Jesus. Jesus love. Y'all are going to catch on and you're good. Right? You got it, Laura? Okay. Ah. But there's another way. You don't reel them in. You hunt them down. You hunt down the Jews. And you use violence to the same end. And so here's what he says. And the Lord says, and if they don't respond to grace, I'm going to raise up the hunters. This guy. I'm going to raise up the hunters. And the most famous hunter of all was sent by God is a man named Adolf Hitler. So if you can't convert Jews, you kill them. The greatest hunter, the greatest, my friends, the greatest hunter of all. Are you going to tell this guy, by the way, Christians, are you going to tell this guy he's not a Christian? He's got a much bigger following of Christians than you ever will, than your minister does. Whoever your minister is back home, far more people follow this guy than your minister. You going to tell him he's not a Christian? So what he's saying is, no, nah, we're going to offer Jews, Jews in the class, a whole bunch of you up at the top there, all you women up there. Okay, we're going to offer you the grace, the opportunity. But if you don't take it, we're going to do it the greatest hunter that God ever sent. God sent Hitler to hunt Jews. Got it? We're going to send the greatest one. It's just going to hunt you down. We'll just kill you. 
Okay? It's like, damn. Dude, I, had to wo- I didn't have to work to find this guy. I had to work to sort through all of the hundreds upon hundreds of examples and people who are well enough, well known enough that I could use and I could put a quote up there and I could talk about them. It, I didn't have to work to find him. I had to work to struggle through who I wasn't going to use, but I liked his green shirt, so I thought I would use him. Okay, you ready? Oh, oh, also, oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, that's not the reason I chose him. Here, let me tell you the reason I chose him. Because he actually is a spiritual advisor to a very, very well-known person. A person who very almost could have been president of the United States. A person who is in the U.S. Senate and is a very powerful figure in the Senate. Ted Cruz. And here's what Ted Cruz said. I am grateful for Mike's dedication to a, call a generation of young people to prayer and spiritual commitment. Heidi and I, Heidi's his lovely wife, are grateful to have his prayers and his support. With the support of Mike and many other people of faith, we will fight the good fight, finish the course, and keep up the... Wait, what's the good fight? Against Jews? Are you... Wait, are you, hang on. Ted, wait, are you talking about killing Jews? Is that the good fight? This guy, so he was called on this Mike Bickle, saying, are you going to condemn him? He never condemned him. You know what? Here, you ready? My friends, what world are we in that a man who's really one of the finalists for one party's run to the presidency, a powerful senator in Washington, one of the hundred senators who's really powerful, who has a spiritual advisor, friend, fundraiser, who can say God sent Hitler here to do the important work of cunning down and killing Jews. And this guy doesn't even have to disavow himself of that anti-Semitic man. He can just say, we're really happy to have his support. My friends, That is the power of anti-Semitism in the United States. And that is why Jews are afraid. Because just like that, we could just turn our backs. That's why Jews are afraid. And those of you who criticize Israel, because you think Israel is doing these really horrible things to Palestinians, which many Israelis are, and I don't support the policies, what, what what are you going to do? If, you're Jew- if I'm Jewish, I want a space. Because I don't trust these people. I don't. Dude, this is a senator. How long is it? What other senators are thinking this? What other people in Washington are thinking this? You're not thinking it. But listen, you're not thinking it. Well, I'm not thinking it. I don't think this. My family doesn't think it. My friends don't think it. We're all Christians. We have our prayer group and we sit around and we hold hands and we pray to Jesus and then we sing and we do our thing and we wave, you know, this. And that this is not, we're not hating Jews. We're worshiping Jesus. We're doing all, so they're doing the same thing at Bickle's church. They're doing this. How long is it going to take them from doing this to doing, I don't know, whatever they're going to do to hunt down Jews and kill Jews? How long is it going to take them to make the switch? And that's what Jewish people are afraid of and ought to be afraid of. Yeah, you're not doing it today. What about 10 years from now? It happened pretty quickly in Nazi Germany. What about 10 years? What about all the Muslims who are really peaceful? And then like, they go to something and then a year later, they're really violent. They've taken out some radical Islamist ideology. It only took a year. That happens. People get converted in that way. So well, how do I know that you're not going to get converted in that way? Well, wh- Here, by the way, can I just show you this? This guy, Juan Cole. Just in case you're wondering. This is, that's the estimate. It's a pretty good estimate. I looked at his data. Deaths in war and political violence by religion. Um, Next time we hear one of our leaders, whether they're religious or political, talk about 
Islam as a violent religion. Please take a snapshot of that. Put it on your phone. Pull it out really quick and look at it. Whose religion is most violent? Like, what is it? Dudes, what is it? Whose? What? Huh? What are we talking about? Do you want a few more examples of people hating Jews? Do we need more? I don't know. Okay, here's what I need. I need a Christian in the class who's having a really hard time right now to say what you're having a hard time with. Because I don't want to wait and hear it from a discussion group. I want to be able to respond right now. Well, who's having a hard time? What are you having a hard time with? If I, was, if I was an actively a Christian and I was listening to this, I'd have a hard time, man. Because I think I'm talking about you and I'm not talking about you. It's like you, you, if the shoe doesn't fit, don't put the shoe on. If the shoe doesn't, if it's not true at your church, well, my church never taught that Jews killed Jesus. Fine, we've moved away from that because we've deemed it to be politically incorrect. But people still teach that. And we taught it for 2,000 years and that leads up to the Holocaust and we just keep going. What, I need a Christian to tell me what you're struggling with. Anybody, really? Yes, ma'am. Here, can you pass that back? Pass that back, dude. Hello. Um, sorry if my voice is... Oh, That's all right. Let me stand, no. Yeah, stand up. What's uh, your name? Can I sit down? Yeah, you can sit down. Cool. Um, I'm Audrey. Um, and I completely agree with you in the sense that... And I know full well I am Catholic. I know full well about the violent history of... Christianity and mm -hmm. I have no problem with you going through the history and opening up the eyes to many people because I think that is necessary to grow deeper in faith and understanding of number one the depth of sin and how it is impactful regardless of your faith cool um, mm -hmm. but the one thing that I am struggling with is your wrongful use of scripture um, and how and I understand that yes, every religion has their specific traditions and way of worshiping, and I just don't appreciate belittling of worshiping and. Wait, what? What scripture did I misuse? Take, take, be strong and finish the fight. I. I know, but I know, but believe that, that the fight is. I do yeah. not believe that Jesus was saying the fight against Jews when he was on the cross. Dude, he literally said on completely. the cross. I completely God them because they do not know what they're doing. Yep, I completely so I agree with you. I'm 100% in agreement with you. I'm 100%. I would, in a million years, I would never interpret it that way, but that's how he interpreted it. Yes, and, so, and I think it's awesome that you were bringing yeah, awareness so, to that, but I, I mean, I, and I know the way you're speaking of it is yeah. not saying that you're speaking in the sense of agreeing yeah. and trying to persuade people to feel that way. So, so listen, this is what's really important. I'm really glad you're bringing this up. Y'all, here, listen to this. You ready? You know, you, you hear Muslim, like there's a statement in Islam. If you, if, the, if you take the life of one single innocent it is person, it's as though you've taken the life of the entire world. That's all you need in Islam. You don't, you never harm an innocent person at all. Okay, and the decision as to who isn't innocent, it's a long process, okay? So it's like, that's just a given. <clears throat> Jesus saying, forgive them for they know not what to do is the core teaching of Christianity as far as I'm concerned, right? So anything beyond that, you're missing it, right? Yeah. So just like Muslims misquote the Quran, Christians misquote the Bible, the New Testament. And so I 100% agree with you and what, what I just want to say to all the Christians in the room, remember that same thing is true for Islam. The exactly. same thing. So I'm 100% with you. I'm not, it, it, like I yep. appreciate your lecture today and I do, yep. I really do appreciate it. It's just in some sense. No, I got you. I, was, I know I got you. you asked you. me what, what, in what stance was I yep. struggling and I'm being Yeah, we still have two minutes. Yo, dudes, hang on. We got time for one more question. One more person. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate that. Because that is one of those things where it's hard to sit with. But 
but again, what I do when I feel those kinds of things is I say, oh, wait a minute, hang on. When am I, when am I saying that like Muslims are doing the same thing that I don't want people to do to me? You know, like misquote scripture and that sort of stuff, right? Yeah, Some, one, one more person. Who, somebody else? Yes, ma'am. Yo, 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 listen up. Hi, um, my name is Jordy. Um, and yeah, I appreciate today's lecture and I think it's super important to be bringing awareness to this and having equality among all of the religions and how we view it. But yes, I did have a hard time because I did feel like, um, how you spoke of Christianity today was belittled in the sense of how we worship and um, pray. And I also struggled with your claim that Christianity is a violent religion. Um, well, hang on. I'm, but I'm not really saying that, right? Uh, okay. I'm not, well, I don't, like I don't the, think that. Okay. It's just based on the data. If you want to look at the, if we want to say like Islam's a violent religion, then we have to say Christianity is a violent religion. Right. Okay. And that's yeah. why I was confused because I wasn't sure if you were saying that claiming that the religion is that. No, I don't because, think it is. Okay, so I don't know any Christians who are violent okay. personally, so thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you. All right, y'all. Hey, H talk about yo, human development. I remember HDFS, oh no, health and human development majors, not just HDFS. We need some people to be part of this. Opportunity.